Um, thank you to all the speakers for this fascinating session on the finance system at large. Uh, I will mainly concentrate on that uh, more than on, that, uh, on the last one on the stem cells because it's uh, an, another level of abstraction, I will say. If I retake the three levels, uh, the personal level, the meso level of the company and the macro level, I think that the first new we have heard uh, from Marido is every one of us is a banker, is an investor. So our own ability to train our consciousness around this area comes from where we are putting our savings. A second point, which is related to personal consciousness, is that uh, it's true to say that the micro actors who are professionals in the finance and especially in the market finance industry uh, have suffered the moral weight of huge salaries. And this challenge in on, is on our table, if we are bankers, in on their tables, if uh, they are, we are, they are in, in that type of, of, of a person. But we have seen that the insanity of some performance incentive system was something of, of high importance. And the role of money, which was the last question around that, can be one of the way to, to cross around the, across, to go across the levels. On the meso level, which is a company, uh, I think we have heard various ways to reput ethics in banking and finance. The first one being deciding to, uh, to download or to diminish the risk exposure, and it's possible, it's possible to do so. The second one bit, uh, is that if you do so, you have some consequences on the extravagant salary because you will be less in that type of business. And the third one is uh, going back to basics, going back to basics of what is the work of this area, uh, which is to be an intermediate with, between liquidities and real entrepreneurs who have meaningful projects. Last ideas, which was to prohibit wages, bonuses based on price, of course, can be one of the items of regulation. A few items on the meso level. On the macro level, uh, I have heard two things, two key things on the macro level. Uh, first, a call on issue related to economic functioning, and the second relates to educational system. And I will finish by a few food for thoughts which are related to that. On the economic level, uh, the huge imbalance uh, between debt and debtors and creditors, uh, the fact that we have been for so long debt fuel growth in, European, in Europe and, uh, and US uh, is something which of course uh, challenge us in terms of virtue economy, how as a collective body uh, we are willing to go towards a more virtuous economy uh, it happens that I am half, or a large half of my life in France and a small half of my life in Singapore. And in, in France, every citizen uh, has a debt of 25,000 euros per capita toward the international market. In Singapore, everyone has a credit of 25,000 per capita in the international market. And the ability of the two countries today to decide on public policy, of course, is directly the effect of that. At the macro level, <clears throat> I think uh, we have been uh, re-emphasized um, uh, re on the perverse effect of uh, securitization uh, and all the de-responsabilization, which are the consequence of that, uh, the, the extreme level of leveraging, which also because of the anonymous character of the, the, uh, the, the tools, um, conduces to the de-responsabilization of the actors as a company, and it's, it's likely that there is, there is something to think about that. This is at the macro level uh, on the, the economic system, I would say. On the educational system, which has been quite challenged during the, the afternoon, um, uh, I think you, you, you are putting your, 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 uh, your finger on something which is very relevant. Because today, uh, how to really educate person who will serve the real economy, I am educating person for the financial world, rather than educating them to the most abstract technical schemes, uh, 
that very few masters, but they master that as an instrument, not knowing exactly the consequence of the instrument. And I think the, the challenge you are asking to the educational system is that it's true to say that the spirit, a part of a spirit of instrumentalization on these very powerful leveraging tools uh, has occurred within the educational systems. And it's likely and it's fair to say that we have not educated in business school people um, to the very powerful instrument saying them simultaneously that none of these instruments are neutral. Uh, the, the paradigm that these instruments could be neutral is deeply, deeply false. And very often, most of our professors are very embarrassed with that type of sentences. If I finish with uh, four points which are food for thoughts, um, well, personal food for thoughts at, at least, maybe some of you will, will find some interest there. Um, I will emphasize a first interesting point, which is there is a perverse loop effect between the very high level of salary in the financial market and the ranking of business schools. Because the journalists are ranking the business school in proportion to the salary of the young graduates. So guess is what the incentive of the business school? To train as many persons to the financial market in the most instrumental way in order they will have the highest salary. And you have a magnificent perverse loop there, which is real, which is a concern within a number of, of business schools, but which today, which cannot uh, solve without working between businesses and business school. Uh, second point, two, two items around uh, company performance yardsticks. The first one is, do we have the, the appropriate measurement tools? Uh, if you take the proposal uh, from Philippe de Voot, uh, saying that the purpose of the firm could be create, to create economic and social progress in a globally responsible and sustainable way, but to create economic and social progress, today we are not measuring that. So what are we measuring? And second question, when are we measuring what happens in our companies? And related to the when, what is the relation to time, short term versus long term, that we are emphasizing so doing? In a dream world, could we imagine that a kind of coalition of very key business leaders in the world will push towards the government to uh, just forbid quarterly reports, but impose annual reports? I is it absolutely nonsense? Or is the fact that the performance are measured every quarter is something which mechanically conduces to the shortest term as possible? Question about IFRS, the pro-cyclicity of I IFRS, of course, has been largely documented. But uh, I think the debate is not finished on that. And uh, the, 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 the dimension of volatility that these introduce is, is something which is today on the table between Europe and US especially. And last, maybe during the afternoon, we have touched a little bit some, something which is even more enormous than the quarterly reports, which is anonymous company. Anonymous company. If a time is come when too big to fail is a new motto, and if many people could feel protected by too big to fail, don't we have maybe to readdress uh, the, the various uh, legal systems we are today, very, very fundamental item, and which is the, the anonymous society? There are a few thoughts for the end of the afternoon. Thank you for your attention.